Okay, so it says starting, but I'm not sure that anything's happening here. Is it really starting? Aha, okay. <laughs> so yeah, the question this morning, two minutes ago is, am I good? Am I ready? Are we doing this? I don't know. It's Monday. It is week three. We've made it to week three. Wow, who knew we were going to make it here? This is craziness, but this is week three, and um, what are we doing? I don't know. Are we ready? I don't. Anybody else? Hi, Pam. Um, so, what did we do this weekend? I did the hill. I hiked it. Yep, after the the uh, Q Talk Live on Friday, I left here and did 10 rounds up the hill. That makes 1,000 500 feet up I went and that was the goal and I'm gonna hang on that goal for a while and see how long I can keep that up before I move on to the next one so here we are sunny Ohio supposed to be in the 60s I think Andy said today he's here with me today again and um, excited it's sunny the grass is so bright green all of a sudden it feels like it just all churned this week but I think the Sun is shining on it and on us so that makes it really cool anyway so today um, we're doing a two-part class this is part two of the umbra ring if you were here on Friday and following along Let's see if you can see that there we go so that's the umber ring and um, so we're gonna do part two if you're not doing the ring go have a snack and come back um, and uh, in about 20 minutes 15 20 minutes and then we're gonna do the clasps the, the minimal metal clasps okay so here we go on the umbra ring so we're gonna review what happened last week this was my sample so you should have over the weekend if you are following along you should have made the um, ring shank you should have made the um, what are we calling this the rim and soldered it to the back plate soldered it to the ring shank and also soldered the prongs into place um, if you have questions go ahead and post them here and I will see if I can get to those questions so where we left off um, was all that soldering if you didn't already do it you need to do some sanding and I'm gonna flip the camera at this point and move that down so you can see where we're going with the sanding and then we're gonna do a little polishing too So if you're following along and you need any of the items that were used in this project, um, I've added the information um, in the details. So uh, Pam had a question regarding blackening. We're going to get to that in just a minute and I'll answer that question. Okay. So here, uh, to do a little bit of polishing or a little finishing, if you have any uh, seams that needs to be uh, gotten rid of or you are unsightly just go ahead and start with the 400 sandpaper and just sand away so you're just gonna sit here and sand it if it's really severe then go ahead and use a file but you'll sand that until you're happy and once that's done go ahead and sand the entire piece until it's all nice and even into one um, until one consistency right of that sandpaper and then if you're looking for a high polish then you're going to move from 400 to 500 grit sandpaper and then from 500 to 600 before you put it on the polisher okay so if you like it in the matte finish go ahead and just leave it at the 400 that's pretty much what I did here for the uh, oops for the silver one is just at and it, you'll see the the picture um, is only at the 400 it's a bit matte and we're not going to focus for me today are we 
Okay then. But anyway, okay. So you'll just go ahead and sand all of that till you're happy. All right. So once you're done with all that polishing, we can address the stone. Your prongs are probably too high right now, so you'll need to trim that. You'll put the stone in and push over the, the prongs just a little bit. You'll need something like a prong pusher, like this. Um, a burnisher will also work. I like the prong pusher because it gets me in really close inside. Let's see if you guys can see that. Put a white background up. So I'm right in there and I'm pushing it right up towards the stone, but not over, okay? So as you can see, the, the prongs are still sticking up like so, okay? So then you'll trim it at an angle, and here's what I mean. So if this is your stone, you need to trim the wire at an angle towards the stone so that when you bend it over, you don't have a wire sticking out, all right? and you want to trim it actually I'm going to cut it short first so I can get in there a little bit more easily Okay. so now that I'm I've trimmed it close if the prongs are still a little long, because you know you don't want these to be too long because you, you want the stone to show off, trim it some more, but now I'm going to trim it at an angle. You want to just make sure that the prongs are tall enough to come right over the stone because that's how it's going to be held in. All right, so then I'm trimming this at an angle to the outside. So go through all four of them, and there it is. Let's see if that's going to, again, don't know, you know, it was focusing really nicely all weekend long, but now that I do this and I'm live, it doesn't want to focus. So weird. So holding it still to see if it will focus for me, but no. Okay. Nonetheless, these um, prongs are a little sharp. You'll want to get a little sandpaper in there and sand those down. Another handy tool here is, believe it or not, a tiny little nail file. Don't sand the stone, you'll scratch it. So, oops, I missed one. Actually, I cut this one, but I didn't cut it at a great angle. Is there a way to fix it if you have cut the prong too short? You unsolder it, pull it out, and put a new one back in is how you're going to unfix that. Okay. So all I'm doing here is I'm just sanding down those prongs just a little bit to take off any sharp edges. Okay. You could also, if you have a flex shaft, you can use um, one of those little sanding attachments and gently hit that. But just remember, don't hit the stone. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to check. I'm looking underneath the prongs to see that there's no gaps in between there. And if there are, I'm just going to take out my prong pusher and gently push it in. All these wires should be really soft because you've been um, you've been annealing it through the soldering. So they should not be work hard at all, and they should just move down nicely. And at the same time that I'm pushing these down, I'm sort of burnishing the ends too to remove any sharp edges, and that's nice. So that's it. You are done. Okay. Well, I say that. And then there's polishing. I'm going to move the camera here in a second um, to show you how to polish. Okay. Action. Actually, nope, I don't need to move the camera. So. It looks like it's uh, focusing for me all of a sudden. Okay, so one more time. It should just come right to over the edge, okay, where, where the curve is. You want it right over it so that you can hold in the stone. 
Okay. So next, we're going to polish. So you need a um, some sort of polish. This is Euro Luster. I I know that there is, what is it, Shazam, something like that, is another one that works too. Um, Euro Luster is a nice finishing polish, so you don't have to do it in steps. A lot of people like to use rouge, and that works also. Here I have a muslin wheel on a um, flex shaft, and because I don't have enough space. I know you guys all look at my studio and go, I don't have enough space. But no, I say I don't have enough space to get into a big polisher. So this for me works really well. Okay. So all you do is you're going to run the muslin wheel right on top of the um, on top of the the euro luster. You see, it's picking up the embedding the the polish on there. So then, all you're going to do is run this with a little bit of pressure on the on on your metal until you're happy okay just like so so the euro luster and the muslin wheel all that is available on um, the rimbeater.com it's and I did provide a link there for you and where I just lost the other ring oh here we go so here with the umbra or I'm sorry the silver you can do the same So whether it's the copper or brass, you can definitely use the same polishing technique. And you can see how shiny it's already coming up. Do you see the difference between one side and the other already? So this is easy. <clears throat> and you can do this for any of your, your metals. It'll work just fine. Actually, I don't know how this would work on steel, but let's see. And then I'm going to hit this. So the Euro Luster, just so you know, uh, comes in a one pound package. I say that's going to last you a few years uh, because you guys are not doing this like every single day as far as I'm aware anyway. But for me, one of these will last literally years. I'm finally finishing up, I think, my first one pound block and I've had that for like eight years. Um, so it's a thing. Okay. So then you're going to take this to the sink, and if you have any um, residual black um, from the from the polish, that's going to get washed off with soap and water. Dawn liquid soap and a toothbrush is your friend in the studio. You definitely want to use that. Okay, so once you've got that all polished, you want to go ahead and patina this and blacken it. It's really straightforward. You can use liver sulfur if you want. Just dunk it in, or you can apply um, Black Max or Jax was the question. Yes, Jax uh, silver blackening does work. Anything that you like is is what you're going to use. Just remember, anytime you use an acid in this situation, you're going to want to make sure you wash it really well and neutralize it, or else it's going to continue to eat your metal. So you're just going to brush that on and then repolish it some more if you get a little sloppy. Um, I like my heads. I don't know if you can see that, but my heads are shiny. Okay. And I, I don't like them black, so I just take a little bit and polish off the heads like like so. But that's it. So any um, I the question is which uh, oxidant do I prefer? I really like um, I like black max because it's the most intense black that you can get. I've tried the Jax and for me it doesn't work that fast. <laughs> yeah, I know, I like instant gratification. Um, and as far as liver sulfur, I prefer that on copper and because liver sulfur is not intense enough for me on silver. Okay. But Black Max is too intense and too aggressive on copper. So I do liver sulfur on copper, Black Max on silver and that seems to work really well. All right, so that's how you're going to finish the the ring. Um, when you go to when a couple more tips here on this. When you go to set this the prongs, 
if you prefer you can definitely put it on a um, a ring clamp like so right and that works it's just a bigger surface to hold and it's a little bit makes it a little bit easier to hold additionally if you um, have a vise I'll show you up here yes you could you could patina before the stone depending it sort of depends on the stone if you have a really um, soft stone I would patina before you set the stone okay and um, but like for me if it's a quartz I don't worry so much about it and um, it's just it's just a matter I, that's sort of up to you because um, it's not gonna it's not necessarily gonna eat the stone but if it's a porous stone absolutely you want to go ahead and patina this before so if you have a, a vise you can also put it in a vise to set if it's easier for you to hold so that's another way of holding the stone for setting okay so aside from that those are the couple of tips I have on the setting of the stone um, I don't think I missed anything so alright ready for the toggle let's do uh, Let's do the toggle. Okay, let's come back over here. So for the toggle, you're going to need um, some 18 gauge wire, some 16 gauge wire, the usual copper setup, I'm sorry, solder setup, uh, bench blocks, uh, chasing hammer, leather mallet, chain nose pliers, multi-looping pliers, and that kind of stuff, okay? So let's do one. So let's just to let you know, I recently added the copper wire, 16 gauge and 18 gauge, onto the website so that um, you don't have to buy a whole pound of this when you go to order it because a lot of places only sell by the pound. Who needs 200 feet of wire? I don't know. I don't even need 200 feet of wire. So we put it up in 20 foot increments to make it a little bit easier for you. So the first one we're, we're going to do is here. Will it focus? Question. No. Okay. Maybe we try it on the black background. So. So that's the first one, first toggle. Okay. So a couple things you need to know about doing toggles. When you're doing a toggle, the toggle bar is always going to be twice as uh, long as the diam twice the diameter of your toggle so that it doesn't slip out. Okay, so for this one, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. You're going to use 16 gauge. Put that there. You're going to use 16 gauge wire. And you'll need three inches. And then you'll use your multi-looping plier. And I'm going to go to the largest one. And I'm going to find the middle. Okay. And I'm going to bend around. You can do whatever size you want depending on what you're looking for. So this will also adjust a little bit if you are looking for a smaller, um, a smaller uh, toggle. So I'm just making adjustments as I'm going to find the middle. You see that? So I'm going to bring it around the largest part of my multi-looping plier and I'm going to cross that over. And then I'm just going to take the round nose. Oops, I'm going to trim off this end a little bit here because I have a beveled edge. So it would be nice if they're not so sharp. And then I'm going to take a small um, round nose and, oops, wrong direction. And I'm going to turn it out towards the outside of the loop, okay? I'm going to make the smallest bend I could possibly make. Tight, 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 tight. You see that? And then I'm going to do the same on the other side.
Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to take out my chain nose and I'm going to squeeze it in. Because I want my loop to be really small. So I'm just making adjustments in. And then on the flat side of it, I'm going to just make a swirl. Like so. And then swirl it up. And I'm going to try to keep these as even as I can. It's OK. It's not great. Let's see if I can make that a little bit rounder. See how I'm adjusting that to make it round? Okay, so I'm going to bring these together. You want to make sure that you make a connection in here because we're going to solder that together. Okay, and it's a little wonky, so I'm going to take out my um, leather mallet and I'm going to flatten that just a little bit. So I've been working my, on a bench block and a mouse pad and because the mouse pad deadens the sound a little bit and I've had some feedback on it that it works really well. So I'm just going to put this out there. There is some of you who, I, um, I'm sorry, I have a whole bunch of mouse pads. So if any of you guys are would like one and you're putting it in order, let me know. I um, I have some to share, so I'd be happy to throw that in your box. Just let me know. Okay, so here, as you can see, it's wonky. So I'm just going to flatten it. So like so. And then I'm going to take out my chasing hammer, and I'm going to flatten the round edge. You don't have to. This is an aesthetic. Okay. You don't want to flatten it too much because it's going to weaken the wire. But there you go. And make sure that your uh, joint stays together and that it's flat. Okay? A little bit more here. So there we go. We're going to solder that together. You'll want to, um, to make these decorative pieces here that I have. Um, it is a granule and on top of a ballet bead. So to make a granule, all you need is a little bit of fine silver wire. Let me grab some out for you. I have some scraps sitting here. Okay. And then you'll want to go ahead and flatten that piece of wire because if you don't, it'll, it's just going to roll away and that's no fun. Okay. So I'm going to flatten that for a second. And, and then you're going to just heat it until it turns into a ball. You can do that on a soldering board or you can do that on a magnesia block. So what is bally silver? Bally silver is simply a, um, a, a descriptive of the kind of design, okay? and Yes, it originated in Bali, but most quote unquote Bali silver comes from um, India these days. And I forgot to grab a couple pieces. So I'm going to grab some pieces here. Give me a second. And of course, my drawer is stuck. Oh, geez. Okay. Did you hear that? It all fell all over the floor. Okay, so what is Bali silver? You see? This is all bally silver here. So they're just beads. Um, it's indicative of the style that comes again from Indonesia is where it started. It usually has all these little tiny granules and whatnot. Um, so for the for the decorative piece here, that little daisy is what I'm using. Um, it's bally silver is what I'm using to decorate with. Okay. So I'm just going to grab one and see if I have another one in here. Eh, we'll just go with one. Okay. Um, Bally silver should be 92.5 or better. 
Now I can tell you about eight years ago when silver went to what fifty dollars um, an ounce, they started cheating. So uh, I don't know where it is today, but it really should be sterling. Sometimes it's it's better than sterling. So okay, so here I have my granule, I have my bally bead, and I have my toggle clasp. All right, so we'll put a little solder down and solder it all together. I'm just going to put a little bit of solder right in between the pieces and then I'm going to put some solder right on top of my swirl. Place my little decorative piece on top. So this is a, um, a star that I have which is sort of fun and then I'm going to place a little bit, actually I'm going to pick up the granule, be easier and dip it right into my solder instead of trying to place the solder and put the solder right on top. So you'll repeat that for the other side too, so so then it's even. You'll do, And we'll do it all at the same time. Let me see, oh look, I found another piece. Look at that, found another piece. We'll do the other side also. So again, a little bit of solder down. Put the piece on top. Put a, another granule. Where did it go? My granule went walking. My second one went away here. There we go. Dip it in your solder. And this is why we have tweezers. And put it down. Oh, Jiminy crickets. Okay, there we go. Okay. And then you're going to need a 5 millimeter jump ring. I'm going to put the opening towards the inside here because um, then I don't have to worry about it coming open. So I'm going to put a little solder on it. And I want to solder, solder this all together because it's the easiest thing to do. You can do it in steps and if you want to do it in steps then you're going to start with a hard solder and then you'll go to medium and then easy. So what you could do is solder the um, toggle together first with hard solder then with medium solder solder the daisies and the um, and the granules on and then with medium solder the jump ring on. But I like doing everything all at once because it just makes my life a lot easier. It takes it takes less time. Okay, then you're going to heat this. If it's silver, you want to heat the whole entire thing. If it's copper, you can just heat right where the solder is and heat it around until it flows. How do you know it flows? It looks like liquid silver. The only fickle thing that you need to know about Bally Silver is that you don't want to overheat it because you don't know what kind of solder they use to um, there you go to solder all those pieces on. So you want to be careful not to overheat this stuff. Okay, so quench it, throw it into the um, throw it into the pickle. So then next comes the the toggle bar. Well, that's pickling. So all I'm going to do here is, I don't have a measurement yet, but I'm guessing that it's going to be about an inch long. So I'm just going to cut a piece. So I'm going to cut this piece a little bit longer. I'm going to cut it at an inch and a half because I'm going to make little um, ba um, balls on the ends of it just for a decorative. You don't have to, but you can. Okay. So I'm going to heat it right at the blue tip, holding the um, the wire with a pair of fire tweezers until a ball forms. So remember, when you're using copper, it's going to take a little extra time. So while this is taking its time, I just want to take a second to thank everyone for um, sharing the, the videos and 
being so supportive and reaching out to me. It's been really cool to hear about what everybody's doing and how this has gotten people working again. So you guys should have been working all along. That's all I have to say, really. I mean, come on. You come to class, you should be doing this at home, right? Okay, there it goes. Little ball. Flip it over and do the other side. And I'm just looking for a little ball on this one because that's that was just a design choice. Try not to melt the camera. With too much heat here. I'm running out of fuel. Alright, I'm running out of fuel. Okay, so quench that, throw it in the pickle, and I'm going to swap out fuel. Okay. So let's pull the other piece out. Okay. So you want to take a measurement on this and see how wide this is. So this is half an inch. So realistically, the bar should be about an inch long because remember the measurement, the standard measurement is twice the diameter should be the bar. But because we have the loop in the middle, it's going to um, take down that length because I, I cut this at like an inch and a half, right? And the ball will take away some of the length. All right. So then for this one again, very simple. We're just going to take out either the multi-looping or a pair of round nose. And I'm going to go off center as I bend this over to make the middle loop like so. Okay. There we go. So the length is going to depend a little bit on um, how big of a loop you have. So you might want to give yourself some extra room just in case, and then you can always trim it down or make the ball after, after you do this bend. Um, because of course it's just as easy. So here I ran out of fuel so I didn't get a ball on the other end, despite the fact I've made the loop. Now we're blowing. You can see that. Okay, starting to go. I'm going to try not to melt anything around me here. It's a very small space that I'm working with. Quench it so you can see a little ball. And then I'm just going to bend this down just to make a curve. It'll make it catch a little bit more easily if you just bend it down a little bit, like so. Okay. Additionally, I'm going to hammer it right in the middle because it's a little bulky right there right so I'm gonna take out my chasing hammer and hammer it just right in the middle it'll help bring it together and flatten it you'll want to go ahead and solder that too it's really dirty because it's copper so I'm gonna pickle that for a second before I solder that together okay so here for this piece while that's pickling you can go ahead and oxidize this and um, and then brush it back up with either a brass brush or a um, or some steel wool. So you can see it comes right up like that. Or you don't have to black max it at all or liver sulfur it. Aha! Check that out. It didn't work. It fell off. All right, we'll have to solder that back down. We'll solder it with the toggle bar. Let's check on that toggle bar. And here we are. Always rinse your pieces coming out of the pickle because you want to clean it off of the acid. Okay, you can see there. And we'll go ahead and um, and put, we'll go ahead and solder that piece, okay? So here, just a little bit, tiny little bit of solder right into the joint, and then we'll heat it up. And then I'm going to do a little bit more solder right here for the piece that fell off. 
and do that at the same time. Why not? Okay. It's a little hard to see that it's soldered. One of the indications on these pieces, because it's underneath, one of the indications you'll see it sucked down, or you'll even see the solder flowing. That's what you're looking for, and that's how you know it's soldered. And through time, you'll get a feel for it. So that has soldered. And I'm making an assumption there. I think I saw it went. Go. Okay. I guess we'll tell after we come out of the pickle. Make sure you quench it. Don't throw hot pieces in the pickle. It's not good for for you because if it's uh, if it comes back at you, you got some problems. Okay. Next, we're going to do the um, the hook and eye. This. So if you have any questions at this point, throw them out at me. Okay, so for the hook and eye, and by the way, I'm going to remind everybody that there is a lag, so do ask. I'm going to move on and then come back if the questions come in, because there's like a 20 to 30 second lag. I'm not really clear why, and we haven't been able to get around it. So for the hook and eye, you're going to need about an inch or so for the, the hook, I'm sorry, the eye, and then um, you're going to need a couple inches for the hook. Okay, we'll start with that. Oops, we'll start with the eye. So I'm going to go with an inch and a quarter. Actually, I'm not going to go with an inch quarter. I'm going to go with an inch. And then I'm going to draw two balls, one on each end first. It's about two millimeters of the balls. And again, we're just going to hold it right there until you get your balls to come up okay so the question is how do I decide which kind of clasp I use you know it's about aesthetics for me it's absolutely about aesthetics and it's also for the person who is um, wearing it what is easiest for them. So, okay, so I have a ball on each side. I'm going to pickle that. And I'm going to pull out the other pieces. Okay. Okay, done. Oops, you can't see that. Put you there. And put you there. Done. All right, let's pull the other piece out. Okay, it's teeny weeny. Have a hard time pulling out of the pickle here. Okay, so then here, didn't pickle it that well. I'm drying it off, off camera. So I have my little um, one inch bar with the two millimeter balls on the end. I'm going to pull out my my um, multi-looping plier and I'm just going to bring this around the smallest part to make a loop and I'm eyeballing the middle like so okay it did go a little too small oof it went too small what was I thinking we'll do that one more time all right, too small. So one inch is too small. Let's go with an inch and a half. Sorry. Good thing we're working with we're playing with copper, huh? So another ball on each side, and what happens if you get a little pin on the end of your ball? It's because you didn't pull it off at the right time. So I have a little pin on this one. You can just heat it up just again, and the pin will suck right in there. Okay, and it should go away. Pickle that. So while it's pickling um, to make your hook, 
I'm just using a three-quarter inch dowel rod and I'm just going to bend it around and I'm just going to make a ring. No big deal. Really, really nice and tight around that. Make sure that the ends are nice and flush and we're going to work it together like a jump ring. I'm not worried about shape because we're going to fix that anyway. Make sure you bring it together for soldering. And I'm putting it in my chain nose and squeezing down to bring it together. Can you see that? Okay, so it's a nice little joint there. So we're going to use, if you're doing silver, you're going to use a little hard solder here. Medium solder will also work. I'm using copper solder. Remember, copper solder self-levels, so you don't have to worry about different levels. Here comes my bar. Okay, so we'll solder that and throw it in the pickle. Okay, just heat it. Done. Okay, and then into the pickle. So here, I'm going to do this one more time with the bar. I'm going to find the middle and bring it around. And I'm gauging as I'm coming around if I need to make any adjustments. You see, so now it's even. Um, I have, I, the question is, do I have any more of the umber ring kits? Um, I believe I only have one left. So, and it is available online, and it's the amethyst is the only color I have left. Okay, so I start, and that is 48, I think, 49 is the, was the price on that? Yes, we still have copper solder. Okay, so I'm bending it around. I went ahead and went to the second one because that little one was way too small and I'm just going to make a twist or two whatever makes you happy here and that's it you see that and then you can take out your chain nose if it's not great and bring it around like so okay I'm also going to hammer that just to bring it together just a little bit chasing hammer right down the middle. It's great. Just like so. I'm going to flatten this just a little bit. There you go. And make it nice and flat for soldering. Make sure that the joints are together. Okay. Grab the other piece out of the pickle. Okay. Solder. So this will finish off the the eye here. So I'm going to take out a um, take out a five millimeter jump ring, like so. So if you're looking for solder, we have all the solders except for the gold. So we have silver, hard, medium, and easy, and the copper solder on the website. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit of solder right in between the legs I'll say and then I'm pointing the opening here of the jump ring towards the um, towards the solder just to make sure everybody solders okay right in there don't know if you guys can see that let's see if we'll focus for you there you go that's a ton of solder but we're going with it Okay, let's just move this out while we solder, not get everything hot. And again, heat it. Make sure you heat the jump ring too to get the solder to flow to the jump ring and also to close this up. There you go. Done. Should be very quick and easy. It's a small, small piece. Okay. Quench that, throw it in the pickle. So, for the hook, you're going to put this right back into the multi-looping and I'm going to put I'm going to put the opening on the side 
because I don't want it on the I don't want it to be on the loop here. Okay? So I'm going to pull this around like so with my hands. It should be pretty soft, especially with copper. You should be able to do it. Um, if it's too hard for you, just take out your chain nose and you can do it just like this. Okay. And you're going to bring it around. You see that? And I'm just helping it along. Just like so. And I'm pinching it really tight. I'm going to pinch it really tight here too. Okay. So, real easy. I'm going to grab the flat part and I'm going to twist it. So this is so this is just a way of twisting it. It's a decorative part of all this. You don't even have to do this if you don't want to. But it's just for, you know, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And I'm twisting it a couple times around. So for everybody who's joining us, we're making the hook and eye right now of the class project. And if you're looking for any of these tools, it is on the website. Okay, you see that? And then we're going to bend this over. Here, again, I'm going to use the second largest one. And I'm just going to hold it right there and bend it around. If the wire has gotten too hard for you to work with, just anneal it. You'll be okay. So bend it over. Let's see if it will focus for me. No, of course not. And then on the end, here we go. I'm going to bend it up with a pair of chain nose and make it look like a duck bill. Just like that. It'll make it nicer for when you um, don't make it nicer for when you go to use it. It'll slip on a little bit easier just to have this bit of a duck bill up here. So, and these are tension set. Okay, you see that? That's what the duck bill looks like. Okay, so these are tension set so that when you go to put the eye on there, it slips on and through, just like so. Okay, so there's your hook and eye. I'm going to grab the other one out with the pickle. So, there it is. Easy. Okay, so now comes your, oops, your heart toggle. So you can do this with either 16 gauge or you can do this with 18 gauge uh, wire. And you can see the difference. One is a lot more bold than the other one. And um, so whatever you want to do, it's it's up to you. But it's it both it, they both work. It's a matter of how big of a toggle you're looking for, right? Okay. So I'm going to do um, the 18 gauge. If you're doing the 16 gauge, make sure that you anneal it first or else it's, you're going to have a hard time twisting it. Okay, so I'm taking, this is a 9 inch piece of wire that I have folded in half and I'm going to put it into my flex shaft to twist. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can twist this. You can put it into the end of a drill and twist it. You can hold it with a pair of pliers and um, one end and twist the other end. But for me, the flex shaft is the easiest way to do it. If you've been in my class where I've twisted wire, the reason why we don't do the flex shaft is because sometimes it slips, okay, and then there's wire flying all over the place. So the precaution here is make sure that you're wearing goggles when you're doing this, just in case your wire slips, okay, because that would be really bad if you do that. Okay, so I'm just tightening it in the collet of my flex shaft. And let's see, I'm going to hold it on one end here. And again, if you're using 16 gauge, make sure you anneal it, anneal it, anneal it. And we're just going to turn this on. And you can twist this as much as you want. There you go. That's it. 
Now this wire, once it's twisted, is a bit um, work hardened also. So you might have a hard time, especially with a 16 gauge, to work with it. So make sure that you anneal that too, okay? So after you twist it. So you anneal it before you twist it, and you're going to anneal it after you twist it. Then it'll make it a lot easier for you to work with, especially if you're working with 16 gauge. So I'm going to just snip this off there and there because neither one's going to help me. And I'm going to reserve about an inch, what do we decide? Oh, an inch and a quarter of this, depending on what size, um, or an inch and an eighth, how's that? An inch and an eighth. Um, because, you know, right now you don't know exactly what size um, heart that you're going to do, but it's nice to have that twisted wire already done instead of having to twist a tiny little piece, right? So to make the heart, you're going to pull out your chain nose pliers and you're going to bend it right in half. Find the halfway point and make a V. See that? So you're going to start, it's going to be a wide V. But then it depends also on your heart design. If you want it to be wider like this one or a little tighter. So so you'll make your V's a little tighter if you want a smaller, longer heart. And then with your chain nose, I am simply going to pull this around like so. And I'm going to try really hard to do it evenly so that my hearts don't look wonky. So I'm going to pull it on the other side. And I always check, check, check before I make final turns to see how even or uneven it is. And I try to work both sides one at a time, just a little at a time, to make sure that it's coming together evenly. So I'm slightly off, so I'm going to trim that here in a minute. But I don't just bend one side, because I, I have a hard time with that. But you can, and whatever works for you here is how you're going to make this happen. Okay, so you can see I'm slightly off. That's okay. I'm going to trim it, just like so. So now it's even. So I want to make sure that the shoulders come together and are touching, because you're going to need to solder that. And if you, if you can actually see that the wire is sort of wonky, one's going one way, one's going the other way. Okay, so we'll, we'll bring that together. Back on the bench block and a little mallet and flip it over. Just make sure that it's nice and even. If you like, you can also hammer this a little bit. It's, a, it's another aesthetic choice. I'm still a little bit off, just a little teeny weeny bit, and just bring it in. Okay, just to even that. There we go. Okay, great. So then, you can do a, a lot of things here. There's so many different things you can do. You can, if you want to, do the same thing with the ballet bead and the granule. You can put a ballet bead right there and a little granule maybe. Or you can do what I did here by soldering a granule on the end. And let's do this one, okay? So again, you're going to make a granule with I like to keep scrap around to make granules with. So here's the piece I, I messed up on earlier. So I'm just going to cut it and we'll make a little um, copper granule. Move this off and make a granule. Again, you can use a soldering block or you can use a magnesia block to do this. Magnesia blocks are great for making granules if you're making a lot of them. So you're just going to heat it right onto the wire until it forms a ball. There it goes. Little by little, all the little molecules gather up as you heat it to be with all their friends and grab it before it's too cool. Brilliant. 
and quench it. Okay, great. And it's nice because it has a nice flat bottom. And um, so that'll help in the soldering here. Okay. I'm going to pull out my um, honeycomb block because this will help me in this. I don't have a second hand to help me. And it'll make sense here in a second. So what this will do is it will brace my piece in place while I'm soldering. and one there. Okay, because this piece is going to be soldered on its end like so, to get the flat part to go up against the wire, I'm going to be pushing on it. So without these pins to brace it down, can you guys see that? Without these pins to brace it down, every time I push it, it's just going to move on me. So by having these pins, I can push on it all I want and it'll stay in place. Okay, so I'm going to put a little solder on the end, or on the flat part, like so. Okay, and I'm going to heat it just like this. Heat the whole thing, and while it's soldering, or while it's heating, I'm going to place it down and manipulate it into place. There we go. Wah, did not do it. So if you get the honeycomb block, it comes with, I think it was 20 pins, if not, it was 24, but I'm pretty sure it's 20. So you see how I'm holding it there? And the pins help it keep it in place. So then it doesn't run away from me. Okay, so I messed that up. Played with it a little too long and now it's completely fire scaled. So I'm going to take it off, quench it, and pickle it because there's too much fire scale on there. And hey look, I have another one. We'll do that one. Actually, I'm going to hammer that one down because it's not flat. And do it again. Okay. Be careful with the pins, they are steel and they are hot. I've been torching on them, so notice I'm always picking them up with my fire tweezers, okay? Are you going to move on me? Okay, so I'm checking to make sure it doesn't run away from me. And um, this ball is actually a little bit too big for this piece, so I'm going to look for a smaller one because I'm sure I have another piece here somewhere. A smaller ball. Of course not. Everything's lost. Okay. So I'm going to just make another one. Um, a smaller ball because it's way too big for what we're doing here. And try that again. On the side. Just heat it. So again, it's just making a granule for the end. Much smaller, nice. Okay, make sure you pick it up, but not too soon because you'll mush it. But you want to pick it up while it's still hot, which is nice. And it's a little bit black. I'm going to throw it in the pickle for a second or else it will not solder because it's too dirty. Remember, you want to make sure that you remove fire scale before you solder. A lot of times that's going to be the problem with why things are not soldering. Okay. All right, so there's my, my ball again. My new ball, about half the size of the last one. It should be a little bit easier. And then we're going to apply solder again on the end. And there it is. Okay, heat it and solder it on. Bring it right in there. Hold it right in place. Okay. 
from what? Can you make granules from sheet? Yes, you can make granules from any silver or any metal, really. Um, it will all turn into a ball of some sort. Okay, so there we are, heated up. Remember, this is copper, if you're, you, um, so it needs a second to set. If you're doing silver, you're going to use hard or medium solder at this point. Okay. 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 There it is. And then it goes into the pickle. So while it's pickling, we'll work on the bar. So the bar is, again, you need it to be about twice as big as your heart, all right? And this one I just did very simply. All I did was I heated the ends to create a little bit of ball. It basically just fuses it so you don't have to solder it at all. Like so. Just like any other granule, you're just going to heat this till it fuses. And if you want a ball, you can go ahead and keep heating it until you get a ball. That's fine. It's all a matter of preference. This is aesthetics. All right. So once it starts coming together and fusing together, I'm just going to stop there. And we'll stick that. Oh, geez. Okay. I almost torched the cord on the camera. Oops. Um, stick it in the pickle. Okay. Remember, don't go handling these pins if you've been torching on them. I'm going to stick it on the side. So, um, then now all you're going to need to do is solder a jump ring to the toggle bar. You can bend the toggle bar if you want to, that's fine. Not a problem. And here, again, with the jump ring, opening is going to go towards the bar. I'm just going to dip it and a little bit of solder, like so, and put it towards the bar right in the middle, just like so. And heat it. Until it flows. It makes a connection. Did you see that? The the bar slightly rolled into the um, the ring when it flowed. So that's also helpful to see that. And there's your bar. Throw that in the pickle. And then you need to solder a jump ring also onto the heart. So you would have used either hard or medium to solder the ball if you're doing silver and then you'll do easy, medium or easy to do the jump ring. So then we're going to grab the jump ring, another jump ring, solder again. So here because if I put it in the middle, the solder in the middle right here there's a gap in between the shoulders. So I really need to put solder on the shoulders where it's going to meet the jump rings. Okay? A little bit of solder. So I'm just going to put it right on the shoulders, like so. So every time I'm done torching, I'm, I'm quenching off screen. It's just a, I just have a bowl of water over here and no, I do not use baking soda in my quench water or my rinse water for the, um, for the pickle. Okay, so a little bit of solder on the shoulders where the jump ring meets and heat it. My pickle is also off to the side here. Okay. Now, the, the fickle thing about doing a twisted wire 
is the solder has a tendency to want to run into the twist. So just be careful you don't overheat because the solder is just going to run and not solder your point. So you want to be really diligent about seeing what you're doing there. And this one is done. Throw it in there. So that's just the twisted bar, right? I also show a slightly different bar here for um, just as a, a different aesthetic for fun. Why not? And it's, it presents a little bit of a soldering challenge. So let's go ahead and do this one. So again, depending on the size of your toggle is how you're going to determine the size of your bar. It needs to be twice as wide as your um, as the width of your your toggle. The bar needs to be twice the diameter of the width of your 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 loop there to make sure that it doesn't fall out. Okay. So I'm using again um, 16 gauge because it was done for uh, the 16 gauge toggle. It's a little bit heavier. You could definitely do 18 gauge, and I'm going to cut a one inch piece three times. And of course I picked up the 18 gauge. Try that again. Okay, so I usually just cut one to size and I use that as my template for the other ones. So there's three pieces. You want to make sure that these pieces are really nice and um, straight. So you can do that with a um, with a nylon plier, or if you have two bench blocks, it's really great to do it this way. So I'm going to roll it between two bench blocks, and see that's straight. This one needs a little help. So you can hear it how it changes noise when it's it. Um, straightens out. So there we are, three straight pieces of wire. And I'm going to put it back on here. So I'm going to put two down and I'm going to put some solder between the two first. All right. And I don't get too crazy about this because I know the solder is going to run. So I'm going to put two points down, one on each end of one wire. See if you can see that. See, just a little bit on each end. Put it down and bring it together. Just like so. Okay. So that they don't roll away from me because this has a tendency to do that, I am actually going to pin this in place like so. And if you feel like you need a little bit more um, solder, go ahead and put some on that top piece too. And I can just put some right in the middle because I have a little bit on each end. So one right in the middle and one piece on top. So two pieces of solder down and one on top. So it creates sort of like a triangle of sorts, right, for the bar. And again, they're wanting to roll away and that's why I'm pinning this down. Okay? And solder it. Just heat the whole thing and watch for the solder to flow. Heat it, heat it. So you'll use either hard, actually you want to use hard solder if you are doing um, silver. Okay? There, it's going to flow. Make sure that you are heating it to the point where your solder no longer looks like uh, grains of sand. If you want to be extra safe about these pins, you can quench it. And then that way you won't pick it up by accident, right? Okay, so see, done deal. Okay, so it looks like somebody bought the last Umbra kit. So, just want to let you guys know that before you got online. Okay, so here 
I have the three pieces soldered together and I am going to use my heavy duty cutters and I'm just going to trim that because you know what it takes way too long to um, to file it <laughs> all the way down anyway but you do want to file these ends just a little bit just to take off any burrs like so and to straighten it out okay I'm gonna go ahead and pickle this and pull my other pieces out. A second here. Again, pickle and quench bowl are off to the side. Okay, so you guys can see. There it is. There's a couple others that we did. And then while we're doing that, I'm going to pull out couple more bally daisies. Easy peasy. Okay. Now, I know these pieces are teeny weeny. I like teeny weeny. They don't need to be, but it's just a design preference. So as you can see here, again, I have a daisy on each end soldered. Several ways you can do this. For me, the easiest is to put it down, put some solder on there, and solder the bar to it. A little bit of solder, like so. I'm going to hold these with the fire tweezers, like so. And we're going to solder it down like, like this. So I'm going to heat this whole thing, and I'm going to bring down the bar right when it flows. So notice I'm heating down at the daisy, but yet I'm also getting the bar hot at the same time. And then I'm going to bring the bar right to it and watch it flow. And you'll see the solder flow right to the bar. And it did, just like so. Don't overheat it. Remember, you don't know what kind of solder they used it very well um, could be easy solder and fall apart so be very careful when you're doing that I'm putting down a second daisy and some solder I put my bar into the pickle because it's been thoroughly tormented and so we're prepping it for the next round here so if you are doing this for um, with silver, we already did the hard on the bar, and then we're going to medium on the other. So we're going to do medium again so that we're saving the um, jump ring for easy. All right, so we're going to heat again here. Heat the daisy. We're also heating the bar. Bring the bar in. Heat, 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 heat. Make sure you heat that bar so that the solder goes to the bar. There we go. Come on. Did you do it? I think so. Okay, did it work? Oh, it worked. All right. I'm slightly off, but we're going to go with that. Okay. Pickle that one last time. Then you're going to start the jump ring on, and we'll finish here in a second. So. Um, so a lot of you guys have been talking to me about doing Zoom or Twitch, and so that it can be a little bit, in, a little bit more interactive, so you can ask questions a little bit more easily um, while I'm doing this. So I'd like to put it out there. I am fielding this out, and I want to run a test this week. If any of you are on Zoom and would like to participate. I'm looking for about five people to play with me on Thursday. I'm going to do a, a cuddle bone cast because I promised my son I was going to make something for him. So what an opportunity to go ahead and do a Zoom on it. So if you want to participate, message me and let me know 
and I'll add you to the list. I'm only looking for about five people to test it out to see how it works um, and to see if it's something that we can actually move forward with. And so just looking at different opportunities. Um, if you're on Twitch, also reach out and let me know and see. Um, I, I, I want to see how that's going to wor work out too. So probably try to do a test this week with that. So here I have the bar is done and the jump ring and I'm just going to solder the jump ring right on there. You could put this right on the the um, soldering block and solder it directly on. Okay, I'm just going to grab a little bit of solder and then we're going to be done. Okay, a little bit of solder right down there. Move it towards the bar and right in the middle and heat it like so. Okay, yep, solder flowed right to it. Give it a moment to set because it's copper. If you're doing silver, you're doing easy solder here. Quench it and pickle it. So finishing, you take out some steel wool or you can use a brass brush you can also black max ouch or um, liver of sulfur this if you want some depth okay you can also throw this into a tumbler if you have a tumbler if you're not ready for that investment brass brush and steel wool is great so the only hazard with the steel wool is you want to make sure it doesn't go back into your pickle because it will absolutely contaminate your pickle and create a lot of unwanted issues. So you see how quickly that polished up. And same thing here. So also by tumbling it, it will work hard in it just a bit more. Okay. I'm going to pull out that um, bar here in a second. So you can see the back of this. And then here's the front. I know it looks like eyeballs, right? So, okay, let's pull the bar back out, dry it off. So, here we go. So remember the schedule is pretty much Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 1 p.m. Um, I have posted a schedule. There you go. I have posted a schedule for the next two weeks. I've been working really hard about... Um, getting projects ahead of time so that it's not so last minute. Many of you guys know this this whole project for me of doing online videos came up last minute and I've been scrambling to get projects together and um, getting that ahead so I feel like I'm at about a two week period where I'm ahead of what's going on and so I, I have the schedule for the next two weeks we've got the molecular going on this Friday Wednesday is everything soldering. We're just going to sit here. We're going to talk about soldering. Throw me your questions. Um, you know, different types of solder, different ways to solder, different equipment for soldering. That's going to be Wednesday. Don't have a subject line for next Wednesday yet, but on um, Monday, we're doing the spring ring. I don't know if you can see that, but that one is also posted um, for Monday. Flower power next. Friday kits are available and those will ship out um, later end of the week for next week but that is available already and what else can I tell you um, I think that's it again if you're interested in doing a little zoom with me on Thursday to help me test out the the project I'm gonna do a bone cuddle bone casting on uh, Thursday at 1 p.m. and see how the Zoom thing works and see what we're going to move forward with. All right, we did three toggles, I three toggles, three toggles and a hook clasp, and we finished out the umber ring today. That's a lot. We're well over two hours, but thank you for hanging in there. Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for your contribution and sharing every I ain't sharing these videos. I really appreciate it. Every little bit helps right now, and um, I hope you all stay well. It's nice and sunny outside, so let's go outside for a little bit, okay?
We'll see you on Wednesday. Bye.